Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 192. Today, we're going to talk all about sketch noting, doodling, bullet journaling. And exactly what am I talking about? We have a fantastic guest on the show today. A brand new book is going to be coming out from our friends over at ISTE Publications, talking all about this great stuff. And I am excited to have the author on the show today, Nicole Carter. But before we get into all of that stuff, I want to remind you guys that the summertime is coming. The weather is getting warm. And what are we going to be doing as the school year ends? We just launched a podcast last week with Sue and I talking all about the five conversations that every single instructional coach should be having at this point in time. Please go back and check all that stuff out in our archives over at askthetechcoach.com. I urge you guys, have these conversations. Talk to your principals. Talk to your coaches. Talk to your teachers. Heck, even talk to your students. Have these conversations. Ask these specific questions. Let them know that you guys are thinking about not only how this year went as a reflection, but what the plan is for the summertime and beyond. I'm having these conversations with not only my administrators, but with the teachers that I'm working with. Had a great conversation the other day with our learning, with our library media specialist. Lots of great things that we should be doing, even though the weather is getting warm, even though devices are being picked up in your district soon. This is the time to start planning for next year. So check that out. That's going to be episode 191. Came out last week, all about the five important conversations. And also while you're over on askthetechcoach.com, don't forget to sign up for our instructional coaches group. We have got some great things going on, not only around the ISTE season, but also we're planning some big events for the summertime. Might be doing some day-long PD might be doing some shorter stuff at night to kind of keep our coaching community alive. We have almost 500 coaches signed up on our uh, Facebook group and about almost 200 or so in our LinkedIn group. Would love to have you guys there, part of it. Be a part of the family. Be a part of our professional learning community. Head on over to askthetechcoach.com and check out all the great stuff over on there. But let's get to this amazing interview today with my guest. My guest today has been in education since 2004. She's taught geography, history, and she's currently an amazing instructional coach. I want to bring on today Miss Nicole Carter. Nicole, how are you today? Welcome Hi, to Ask the Tech yeah. Coach. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Restart. Shut sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Every, I, I have to change that somehow because everybody does that. Oh, no. But that's okay. okay. I'm All sorry. Right. No, no, no. I like the energy. We're having fun. <laughs> the kids are still upstairs running around. My wife's going crazy. I'm down here. We're, we're okay. My guest today has been in education since 2004. She has taught geography, history, and currently she is an amazing instructional coach. I want to bring on today Nicole Carter. Nicole, how are you today? Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach. Hi, hey, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Thanks I am, for me. I'm so excited to have you on today. Not only are we going to be talking about the upcoming ISTE conference, but you've also got an amazing project coming out with, uh, with, with, with ISTE. First of all, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. I think I'm on the downhill trajectory from finishing up the book that's coming out and um, getting to kind of enjoy it. Although there's a second half that comes with, you know, writing something like this, which is kind of marketing and making sure that you put up posts and get people excited about it. So it's, it's another job. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about that because, uh, you know, coming up soon, uh, you have an amazing new book coming out. We ha- we're able to get an advanced copy. The book is called Creative Journaling for Teachers, a visual approach to declutter thoughts, manage time, boost productivity. I love the book. I love how clean it is. I love how colorful it is. I'm so excited to have you on here today. Tell us a little bit about the book. 
Yeah, thanks. Um, well, I, it to me, it's kind of a follow up from the other book that I did, which was on sketch noting. In my head, they're kind of in, irreversibly linked. Um, I started doing both things at the same time, and sketch noting got better because of my creative journaling or my bullet journaling, and uh, vice versa. So. It's something that I dove into the deep end with and just taught myself everything I could. Um, got incredibly deep into the community of uh, other journalers out there and really helped myself, I think. Um, uh, being a person that has ADHD and can tend to get really hyper-focused on things, but also at the same time, very disorganized. Mm -hmm. um, this really helped me center some goals for myself and... Um, I don't know, find my system, find something that worked for me, I guess. Now, now I'm excited to deep dive into this concept of journaling. You had mentioned sketch noting in your previous book. I know <laughs> you're going to be doing a great session. Um, you said virtually, I believe this year. Yes. Is, yeah, I definitely want to deep dive into that. My big question for you is why now? Why is now the time for coaches, for teachers to get into sketch noting journaling why do we want to worry about all this this is just one more layer isn't it yeah it is it is one more layer but i think some of us teachers specifically are really um i think that the type of people that gravitate towards something like this we love all things stationary we love we love pens we love uh stickers and things um we love post-it notes we love making ourselves some to-do lists and um i think this style of journaling is kind of at the intersection of all of those things um and can really help us not only be like super creative which i think is just like a serotonin boost for us um but it also, I think, is another way for you to organize your life a little bit better if you're feeling like you're kind of in, in an unmotivated state or on the opposite end, a chaotic state. This is something I think that could really help center people. Um, now, there, there is there is a difference between journaling and sketch noting. I don't know. Yeah. It, OK, let, let, let me just clear the air here. Is journaling and sketch noting similar, different? Are they cousins? Yeah, yeah, that's a good thought. I don't know if I've ever thought of it that way before. They're probably more like cousins. Um, I think a lot of the same kinds of doodles and containers and things that I might use in sketch noting and you know, bottom line for sketch noting, note taking and building hierarchy in your notes, like driving your brain to make connections and to see things that are really important to you. Those are all things that fit within the space of bullet journaling or journaling. And um, that is the, probably the only connection that they really have. Um the doodling piece and stuff, which isn't a necessity. If you're a person that's sitting there going, yeah, I don't doodle, Nicole. <laughs> well, that's okay, but it's not a requirement. And in fact, the creator of bullet journaling, uh, his name is Ryder Carroll, and he has a great TED Talk out there if you're at all interested in this concept. But um, he does a very minimalistic approach, and really it's just these like bullet concepts that are important to him, um, and he's not necessarily taking the creative bent but uh, I think what I found in my research for both sketch noting and for journaling, the act of doodling, the act of drawing um, is very soothing, very calming. So in today's world, those are those are little pieces and that I, I gravitate towards as much as possible. It, it, it seems to me and please correct me here. Journaling, bullet journaling, however you want to, you know, sketch. There's a there's a purpose. There's a reason. There's some kind of organization. Whereas I would describe doodling as I'm just gonna whatever hits my head. I'm gonna do. Whereas you know journaling yeah. is like I'm I'm taking notes in a in a in a organized yes. way. I mean I don't want to hinder on yeah. this too hard here, but I mean no, you know, we, I, we all see kids drawing pictures. That's not mm -hmm. sketch noting, right? No, yeah, sketch noting is really note taking, and then you're adding those doodles to help your brain like make connections. Um, but I think also too, when we make the connection to the to the journaling aspect, I think I make to do lists where I can check boxes off and stuff, and then after the fact. I see a blank page. I see space for me to be creative and I'll go back and add some doodles and just let my brain go. Um, 
the act of being creative like that can can do a couple of different things depending on your intention. Uh, one, like I've said already, it can calm you down and bring out chemicals in your brain that help to, to de-stress you. Um, it can also help you focus. So if you find that you're sitting in a meeting and you've got your to-do list there next to you, which we often do, and you find that your, your brain is not actively engaged with what's happening, um, sitting there and doodling a little bit, even if it's just a random things, can actually re-engage your brain, maybe give you a little bit of a moment to focus on something else and then reactivate whatever's going on in the meeting. Um, there's another piece too that, that, you know, actually doing a little bit of meditation, a little bit of creativity piece can actually help with brainstorming. So I know we're really talking about, uh, you know, tech coaches or coach in general, coaching in general, and that's what I am. And I know that I often have to have conversations with myself or with teammates and really brainstorm. What is our goal? What do we need to do with teachers? What is the next professional development that needs to come out? All of those things, brainstorming, the act of brainstorming, setting goals for myself. I mean, oftentimes I'm making those goals myself. It's not like I have a boss that's necessarily telling me this needs to happen at this time. Um, so providing spaces, creative spaces for my brain to go when I'm doing that kind of brainstorming is actually really, really helpful and beneficial. The research shows it too. So what does all of this have to do with instructional coaching? How do you find that this fits into your position right now as an instructional coach? Right. So when I first started doing bullet journaling, um, I was an instructional coach for for our future ready team. And I had 13 different elementary schools that I was personally responsible for. And I was trying to get out and be with teachers, be in classrooms as much as possible, which meant that like my day to day, drastically different. What I did on Monday looked drastically different than what I did on Tuesday. So what I found was that sitting down and doing my bullet journal, planning out what was happening for the week, really prioritizing my goals, what I needed to get done, um, and leaving space to make those kind of daily to-do lists really helped center my work for the week, <laughs> figure out where I was supposed to be in my district at any one day. Um, and it just helped, you know, get a game plan in place for me. Uh, so that was really pivotal, really vital. Yes, I did have a digital computer, you know, outlook uh, running for me. And that was always necessary when I was putting my, my layouts and stuff together. But there's something about that kind of analog writing it down and being intentional about, you know, the couple things that I needed to get done each day that made the, made, made the progress visual for me. I don't know if that makes sense. It, it does. Is there, is there a difference for you between uh, writing it down on a sheet of paper on a paper journal? And, you know, we talked about this earlier, opening up your iPad and sketching on the digital surface is, do you, do you feel a difference? Do you see a difference? Do you, yeah. do, you do you draw and then scan things in? So you have a hard copy. Like, like, what yes. do you, what, I mean, the I think there's, this is such an interesting topic because I think, you know, first of all, it's a billion dollar industry for planners in general, not just for teachers, but just everybody out there in the world. There's all sorts of planners, pre-made planners that you can buy, digital planners. Um, there's different apps you can use. Uh, what I'm specifically talking about is literally the ability to buy a, a blank book and make it work for you. Create different layouts and spreads that work for you in that particular time. Um, and I think, you know, for anyone that's ever bought a planner in the past and it just didn't work for them. Maybe they tried it in January and then after a couple of weeks it fell off and you go back to it and you, Oh, I haven't used this in a couple of weeks. And then you just, you don't have ownership in it. This is something where I'm starting with a blank book. If I miss a couple of weeks, who cares? No one knows, but me, <laughs> I get to keep going and I don't feel that sense of loss for paying, you know, 40 to 80 bucks on some, you know, pre-made planner. Um, this is a low entry point. Anyone can do it. You could grab a spiral notebook off of your, your bookcase and start doing some bullet journaling. Um, 
and I, I know that people listening can't see it. You can, but behind me, I have like 12, 15 different journals stacked up on my bookshelf. And at any one time I can go and pull those off the shelf and flip through them and, you know, see what I was doing a, a while ago. I can look at all of my brainstorm pages. I can look at the last time I went to ISTE because I make packing lists <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that to, to, I can go back through and look at anything. And, um, yeah, there's something tangible about that, that it's on a book on my bookshelf and I can take it down and look at it. It, it. It's fascinating for me because as I'm listening to you say that, my mind just says, yeah, but I have OneNote or yeah, but I have yeah. Microsoft to do or yeah, but I have Evernote or yeah, I have all of those things. And one of the hardest parts about this is where do you start? And you've, you've got a good answer for this because in the book you had talked about something called the three, two, one. Talk to us a little bit about what this is because even though in the book you're talking years, mm -hmm. you know, I would encourage every coach that's listening to this to, you know, not only finish listening to this episode now, but put this episode on in August, right? Mm -hmm. Like come up with a plan to figure out how this works. So talk to us a little bit about what you call the three, two, one activity here. Yeah, I think at, at, at the core of this journaling process is the idea of filtering down from big picture um, plans, goals, and ideas into smaller manageable chunks. So um, the three to one activity literally is having you think about, um, you know, three years down the line, what are some goals or things that you'd like to manifest, what, whether that's personal or professional for in your district or your building, depending on where you're at. Um, and then what, what could you do within the next two months? What is manageable within the next two months? And then the one stands for what's something you could do in the next day. Um, so getting, getting your mind wrapped around that filtering concept, big picture to smaller, more manageable chunks. Um, you know, teachers constantly are having to make decisions. Um, we're used to that. We have thousands of thoughts going through our brain all the time. So how can we filter in um, what we're doing <laughs> and be more intentional about it? Yeah, there's a caveat here of being, uh, you know, creative and creating, you know, from a blank page, creating something really fun. Um, but at the core, what we're really trying to do is go from big picture to more smaller manageable chunks. So and I would assume if you're an instructional coach, you know, three years for an instructional coach is a huge deal, right? But yes. you might say three marking periods or sure. at the end of the year. And then, you know, maybe sure. by the half year, but I would assume the one is like, what do you want to do the next day? Yep. I, I'm having a hard time here. Like tomorrow, like you really don't mean tomorrow. You mean like in the near future, I would sure. assume. Sure. I mean, I do it. I do it. I do this like big picture planning. I do big pictures for years in advance, but then I also will look at it from a month's perspective. You know, th this month I want to do several things in my garden. Okay. In order to like get my seeds planted, <laughs> I need to make sure that I amend the soil. That's something I could do tomorrow. That's just one small step I can do tomorrow. Um, so it's like that. Right. And, and, um, you know, depending on where you're at as an instructional coach, you know, you might have to think in a couple of years time. I know for my district, it's so large. It's like steering the Titanic. So I do have to think in larger, big picture items um, and then come back to those smaller, those smaller steps. And um, when you set up your journal, you're doing the same kind of thing. You're looking at it from a year's perspective. You're looking at it from a month's perspective. And then you're getting down to a week and to a day. And just trying to check off and be as productive as as possible as you can. One of the things that I love about the way I keep myself organized, that I, I call this the dopamine challenge, right? Because yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of Microsoft to do, and every time you check off something, you get ding. Yeah, and love it. I want to get a lot of those dings. Yeah. So translate this for me, right? What is the dopamine challenge on? paper is it is it crossing it off is it, yeah, it is. erasing it like what's <laughs> what's the goal here that's going to get you that little that little little high yeah one of the main characteristics or the reason it's called bullet journaling is because you do a little bullet you you figure out a a, a 
a key that works for you. I do little boxes, which is exactly like what you're talking about with your electronic to-do list. But I write little boxes for each of my things that needs to happen. When I get it done, I cross it off. And that's my little dopamine thing. Um, at the end of the day, if I don't finish it, then I put a little um, arrow into it, kind of meaning I need to migrate it to the next day. Um, if I look at it and then I realize that even though I prioritized it for the day and it isn't something that really needs to get done, I might even ask myself in the moment, is this something I really need to do? Can I delegate it to someone else? Um, or does it just need to go away? <laughs> then it doesn't get the arrow. It's just crossed out in general. Um, but the arrow is important. It means I need to move it to, to the next day's work and get it done. So as an instructional coach, would you consider bullet joint uh, journaling a personal thing? Are you sitting in the back of a teacher's classroom doodling? Are you working with a teacher one to one and you're like, let me draw? Like, how does this work? Is it, I mean, I can see the organization, right? I can yes. see it for personal, but does this come into play when you're working with a teacher? Let's start there. It could. It depends on as so this is again where it comes down to. I love the fact that you're coming at it with a blank notebook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have always mixed both the personal and professional stuff in my journal. Um, but I could see as a coach, you could potentially create a, a journal for yourself that is used only when you're going and meeting with someone and creating some specific layouts to ask questions or reflective spaces um, based on being in the classroom. The doodling portion as I said, for the most part, that's something I come back in and do on a Sunday or something when I'm sitting and watching TV and I have blank spaces in my journal that I want to fill up with something artistic, right? Like it's not necessarily something I'm doing while I'm sitting in the back of a classroom for sure. Um, there's usually a time and a place. So no, it's more about like, I think setting, setting, setting yourself up for success, creating some questions, some reflective spaces, um, space to create a to-do list. Um, but you're right. It could be something done digitally. There's a lot of digital options out there. Um, I think this is another tool in your toolbox to see if it would fit for you. Um, I have tried doing stuff digitally. I've tried using um, different apps on my um, on my iPad. There's the, of course, there's like Rocket Book ideas that is a, a bridge between digital and analog that I, I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people really enjoy using those. Um, Rocket Books also came out with their own planner mm -hmm. um, that has pre-designed um, layouts for you to fill in and then do your snapshot, put it into the digital record and then wipe it down. Um, so you can start fresh the next day. So there's really a lot of choices out there. And there is a section in my book where I talk about like finding the right fit for you. But I think that's why I liked this so much. And it spoke to me because I could um, change it to fit what I was doing as a, as a technology coach for that week. If I was super busy, I might need a page in my journal for every day of the week. If I wasn't as busy, maybe I only use two pages for all five days, right? Like it fits my need at the time and our, our jobs are constantly changing. So that's, I think one of the big pieces that make it so easy and easy to use or easy to start with. My guest is Nicole Carter. The book is called Creative Journaling for Teachers coming out in uh, still waiting June, July. We're going to make sure we have all the links over on Ask the Tech Coach for everything here. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about is how do you share this with others? I know you're going to be doing an ISTE session coming up soon, um, but whether it be ISTE, whether it be a professional development session for mm -hmm. teachers or for mm -hmm. other coaches, how do you share this how do you teach this? Yeah. I mean, I'm still stuck on, hey, we're at a we're at a coach's meeting. I pull out my calendar, you pull out your coloring book. Not that <laughs> I want to say it that way, but I mean, how do you how do you share that this has a value and a meaning to you? Right. Um well, I mean, I've definitely done a couple of bigger sessions at different conferences and things. And usually you find your tribe. People kind of gravitate towards you um, when you start pulling out all of these fun pens and um, stickers and washi tape and stuff like that. They find you. Um, but I, I know that I've sat down at meetings and just had it out so that I could add to my to-do list and people will lean over and say, what is that? That's That looks really interesting. And that will start a conversation 
education. Um, I've started a little clubs after school clubs with students students are super into this when you start going into communities online you quickly find out that students from middle school high school and into college are using this as their way to organize what they're doing there's a sense of ownership to it i think that is unique to um you know you're creating something that can be for some people a piece of art and um something that you truly value and you know i think that 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 in and of itself is a huge selling point uh over you know buying like a student planner that a lot of schools invest a quite a bit of money on um that is one thing that I've I've done, at least with my own child as well, is say, you know, hey, you're really not using this student planner. What if we got out some fun pens? We got out some highlighters. We started marking off when your due dates for things are. Use a sticker here. Use some washi tape there. And the ownership that you have at that point, because you've added these little embellishments, make it something that you won't lose, something that you'll come back to, um, something that you'll... Uh, <laughs> use again and again really so if i'm going to be attending your isti session should i have a journal with me or oh, you going to suggest what makes a good journal a bunch of blank pages graph paper what do i look for when i walk into staples yeah um well you know the first time you ever start one of these it could be as simple as grabbing you know a spiral notebook that's something that i talk about quite a bit at least with student activities this is something you definitely could do with a student in their spiral notebook uh doing some you know yearly goals weekly goals daily goals those kinds of things um so you could start with just whatever you have for sure. Um, and then <laughs> if you decide, hey, I kind of like this, this is something I can get behind. Um, then you can start looking for journals um, that have usually what people love to use in this community is something called a dot grid journal. So instead of graph paper, it has tiny little dots. Usually they're a light gray in color and some vary in how dark they are on the page, but they're a dot grid. And um, that's how you create all of your little boxes and bullets and things and create straight lines where there's, you know, previously just a white piece, blank piece of paper. Um, and then you can kind of start to ask yourself how deep down the rabbit hole I want to go with this journal. Um, I tend, because I can use a journal, um, I get through a journal every couple of months. Mm. Um, so I have a hard time spending a lot of money on them um, because I, I go through them pretty fast. But I do know that there are things that I constantly look for. I do like a good thicker paper because I don't like when my pens, um, my highlighters or anything bleed through the paper. So I know that's a personal preference for me. So I look for something that has a nice thick um, paper. I do like the dot grid. Um, I like having a little pen loop because I keep a little pen attached to my journal. Um, I like having um, at the back of most of these journals, they have like a little pocket folder so that I can put little stickers or something like that in it. Um, so I like having that. I don't necessarily need page numbers I don't necessarily need a table of contents at the front, but those are all things that you start to play around with and learn um, if you need it or not. So there's a lot out there, but I can get a journal for as little as like $12 and um, have it be a really nice quality journal. One of the things that I love about the book is that there's so many supplements to it. I mean, every page almost has a QR code that goes back to resources. Talk to us a little bit about the website that's set up to support this book and what can somebody uh, find when they come and visit? Yeah, and I think we've kind of been touching about touching on this the whole time. This concept of this is a very analog something in a very digital world. And I think the thing is, is that there's a lot of digital aspects that come into play, even though I am writing in a in a notebook. Um, I love the concept of of mood music. So there's a couple of QR codes that will lead you to some of my favorite curated playlists or um, different YouTube playlists too even that have you know uh, slow TV or something on it to help get you focused. Um, there's 
challenges that you can go to and do. Um, I'm trying to set you up so that eat, as you work your way through each chapter, you get ideas to try yourself. So yeah. you can, you know, start with a creative collage at the front of your journal, which is something I do in my journals. Again, that ownership and just unlocking that creativity. Um, because again, we want to create something that you actually like <laughs> and want to come back and use. Um, and then more, more of the brainstorming, the goal planning, um, and then starting to think about how to set it up for your daily use. So um, one of the things that I just recently finished, I'm really excited about, and people can go and start to now because it's, it's done, it's finished, it's going, is a 28-day prompt, journal prompt, more reflective writing. It's more writing-based than um, goal-based, but it, it centers around goals too. But anyways, you go and you sign up and it sends you a prompt to get you going in your journal every day. Um, and it's kind of a mindful analysis. So looking at taking a closer look at your current position, your current job, what you want to accomplish with that and breaking it down into more manageable chunks. But uh, that is one challenge, for example. So it's 28 days of prompts that lead you or guide you through some thinking i'm curious about the archival part purpose of this you just mentioned that you um go through a journal <laughs> every two or three months or something like that and you know anybody who knows me knows that my, my favorite thing to do is to build something that is searchable right so let's say that you're working in a journal and you're working with you know mrs so-and-so and mr so-and-so and then Hey, I ran out of pages. This goes on the shelf. <laughs> how do you know what's over there? I'll I'll add, how do you know what's over there if your journal is at your house? Like, how do you transfer from you know yeah. where I'm going with this? I'm not coming up yeah. with the right words, but like how how, how it's not searchable, or is yeah. it? No, well, no, this is a good this is a really good question. It's not necessarily super searchable because you know it is on my sh on a shelf behind me or something um i do make sure i put on the spines you know what months it it took to complete that journal and i can go back and look through it then um as i mentioned though there are a lot of digital components that still come into play i still have you know my work calendar so if i really need to search up something that would probably be where i started if mm -hmm. i was trying to find when did i do that thing i probably would search that first and then if i knew that i had done some sort of um layout or something then i would go and try and track down that date in the calendars behind me so um I don't know. It's more, I think when I, when I transfer from one journal to the next, if there is uh, pages where I've put some goals down, if there's pages where I've brainstormed, um, cause there's a whole section where I kind of talk about like creating different collections of pages that always live in all of my journals. And one of them is a series of pages at the beginning that are brain dumps that are just mm. blank pages for me to write stuff down as it, comes up. So I'll have a brain dump for professional development. I'll have a brain dump for canvas, our learning management system. I'll have a brain dump, right? Like, so I have these just blank pages. And so as I move from one journal to the next, I'll go over and see what I need in my new journal, that filtering system that I kind of talked about before. Um, it will move with me into the new journal at that point. So it's a good way for you to kind of, again, like reassess what am I actually doing? What needs to be taken care of now? Uh, what do I just kind of let go um, because it's not important anymore? So now, now, before we started the show, I had asked you specifically, can I challenge you on a few questions? So I, I have a yeah. couple. Yeah. The earlier today I was working on a spreadsheet and, and on a spreadsheet, they have this amazing feature called insert new row to the left. <laughs> what is the equivalent for you? Like, let's say that you, you know, you allocate five pages for brain dump, but you need six or seven. And, you know, these are what does this look like if you need help me here? Yeah, I mean, I think um, anytime I need to create a new page for something it's a blank journal. So I can do that. It's not again, like a pre-bought planner where I am set 
with mm -hmm. specific printed pages. So even though I might have made brain dump pages at the beginning of the book, if I need to do another one, I still have 80 some pages at the back. I can just make one. Just choose so, the next page. And, yeah. and, and what, do you, what do you do? Page five says go to page seven. Yeah. Or and I, yeah. And that is one of the big components. People do use like a table of contents. I don't always use it, but um, that would be another way to like search for stuff. If you are really knee deep in that idea and you were going back and referencing things again and again, then, you know, utilizing that table of context content or um, people call it an index as well. <laughs> Um, both of those would be really helpful in that instance. But yeah, I would probably just leave a note of my note for myself or typically when I'm doing stuff like that, um, it's something I'm using at the time and then I complete the project and I move on and I don't necessarily need it again. I want to put a bow on this by talking a little bit about students. And you had mentioned earlier that you love working with students. One of the things that is important for students to understand is that the world doesn't need to be digital. One-to-one -one learning doesn't have to mean lap Chromebook thing, you know, digital thing. Yeah. You talk a lot in your book about helping kids with goal setting, helping kids make sure that they're at least writing down something. Could you expand on that a little bit? Why is this important for you as a person, as a coach to instill these, these organizational concepts onto your students? And, and what grade would you start in? Yeah, I mean, I think time management is is something that <laughs> that all students need. And um, I think we've seen, at least I know in my area, I'm out in Oregon, uh, we buy planners for students in elementary school. So I've seen third graders using planners in class, and it usually results in the teacher writing something up on the whiteboard and giving the kids five minutes of time in class or something to, to copy what's on the board to what's, to what goes in their planner. And then the planner goes away and you never see it again. So this is a way that I think you could really get kids involved. Again, I'm going to use that word ownership. Yeah. Give them access to stickers. What kid doesn't like stickers? Give them access to markers. Start showing the importance of highlighting. This kind of goes back to sketchnoting a little bit as well. We're building hierarchy. Get the kids to highlight due dates. Get them to put in a different color or a different font, um, something that you want to draw their eye to. Um, you know, if we relegate the planner, um, even though we know and we say as teachers, planners are important, time management is important. But if all we're ever really doing with kids is having them pull it out, copy something on the board and putting it, put it away, then it's not doing what its intended purpose is, right? So I think the more that we have conversations with students about time management, about <laughs> understanding due dates and things, reflection, right? Like we know reflection is a key tool to learning. And to me, reflection is inherent when we talk about goals. Why did I meet my goal? Why did I not meet my goal? What are my actionable items? That is all a form of reflection and thinking about our time and place and what we're currently working on and doing. So I think anytime we can give those skills to students, the better. And we're already doing it. Like I said, as early as third grade, I've seen kids using planners at school. If you're going to spend that kind of money with your building site funds to buy planners for kids, but then not really use them, <laughs> let's, let's, let's rethink that a little bit is what I'm thinking, you know? <laughs> Nicole, I am so glad that you're here because these topics are, you know, they go hand in hand, whether it be the end of the year. I know all of our coaches right now are trying to reflect on what's happening, make those goals, not only for the summertime, but for next year. Yeah, I know personally, this is an episode I'm going to go back and figure out um, and, and we'll listen again in August. I hope anybody out there is listening will make sure that they do that, too. What advice do you have for somebody who's you know, curious. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're sitting at your teacher desk right now or your, your desk and you're looking around and if you notice that you have some post-it notes, if you notice that you have, you know, maybe a notebook here and a notebook there with some odd scribbles of notes, um, you're exactly where I was in, back in 2015. You know, I had all of these things all over, but I needed like an organized way to kind of attack what I was trying to accomplish. Um, you can start small. 
You do not need to go crazy um, and do all of the artistic things that you might find out on social media. Um, if you go on to uh, bulletjournal.com, if you go even on to my website, Mrs. Carter, HLA.com, if you go on to Pinterest, go on to uh, TikTok, go on to Instagram and just start searching up bullet journal, you'll see that there is a big community out there. Sometimes it can be a little overwhelming because there are people that go overboard and do a lot of doodles and drawing that make it very artistic. But there's also a place for you to find um, organization in a minimalist sense. Um, what am I trying to accomplish? What can I prioritize? And how can I make myself feel more productive by doing those things that I've set out to do for that day, for that week, for that month? Um, you don't need fancy pens. You don't need fancy stickers. That makes it fun. I think teachers like pens. Um, and you probably already have a lot of pens, um, but you don't need it. You can start with a spiral notebook and a black pen. The book is called Creative Journaling for Teachers, a visual approach to declutter thoughts, manage time, boost productivity. Three things I know that should be on the list of every single instructional coach this summer and well beyond. My advice to you guys Pick up the book, attend Nicole's session at ISTE, create that first page that says, in one year, these are my goals. This is what I want to do. I would assume as an instructional coach, Nicole, do that for every teacher. Like by the oh, time I'm great. done, I want this teacher here. I want and, and use those, set those goals, figure Huge. things out. You know, we we talk a lot here about using Google Forms or Microsoft Forms to really keep track of of how many times you work with somebody and what kind yeah. of activities nothing that says that you have to use that you could certainly use the you know one 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 slash <laughs> and just keep track of what you're doing with things i mean a google form could easily be a sketch note yeah I, it's again it's another tool in the toolbox if you've tried other things and they just haven't worked for you they haven't spoken to you maybe this might be your thing I want to end with one topic, and I'm so excited that this is in the book. Um, using doodles, using sketch noting for things like social and emotional, using it for mental health. Why did you feel that this was something that needed to be in the book? How does all of this fit together? Um, I think that there is a lot of things that we're all kind of ruminating on right now in the world today. Um, these are all topics that are kind of near and dear to me. I have gone through the biggest highs of my life and the biggest lows of my life while journaling. And to be able to go back and look through and still see myself being productive um, has been incredibly helpful to me. And I wanted to share what that looks like. There's plenty of research out there that talks about why doodling is so therapeutic and good for our mental health. But there's also things out there that talk about this prioritization and goal setting being really good for people with ADHD, for people with um, autism, for people with um, any other kind of you know, things that might need just a little bit more uh, awareness of the world around you and how you're operating it, operating in it. Um, but I think more importantly, because this is something that can be unique to you, and again, isn't like a preset planner with layouts and pages already made, you can tailor this to your needs. And I think that that's what's really critical about it. So opening up people's eyes a little bit to, um, creating something that is unique to you and your needs. If you have any questions, we would love to help you get connected with Nicole. You can, of course, reach out to us at Ask the Tech Coach and find us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. We will, of course, of course, be inviting Nicole into our instructional coaches group over on Facebook and LinkedIn, where we hope you guys have a chance to connect and maybe we can do some sketch noting and journalism, yeah. or ju journalism, journaling um, on a Facebook meeting sometime. But Nicole, where can somebody get a hold of you to learn more about the great things that you're doing? Yeah, I probably post the most on bullet journaling and things on Instagram. Uh, my handle there is Nicole with an H, N-I-C-H-O-L-E-444. And then I'm on the Twitters at Mrs. Carter HLA. And then my website with all sorts of really great stuff is Mrs. Carter HLA.com. One last time, I want to say thank you to Nicole for, for being a guest today, showing us off and 
obviously, we would love to say thank you to ISTE Books for, for connecting us and having her on the show today, just as we've had several other great ISTE authors be on the show. All the links are going to be on our show notes over at askthetechcoach.com. And on behalf of Nicole and everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.